Well, welcome everyone. Welcome to our City View family and uh, all of the people that are joining us on the internet here. This is City View Christian Center and uh, I'm Pastor Keith. This is Pastor Gene. And this is a very first time for this. We've never done this before. We've done some online church, but not like this. This is like being in the studio or something. And, and uh, so we're excited to be able to do this today. But you know what? With all that's going on, we just felt like this is what we wanted to do. We want to encourage you. We want this to be a, a special time. And uh, honey, you want to add anything to that? Yeah. Well, we do. We just we want you to know that we've been praying for all of you this week. We have a, um, your names in front of us, and we know that it has been a very different week. But um, we're just so glad that you tuned in today. And also for those of you that are little ones, hi. We are glad that you're here too, because you're really special to Jesus, and we love you. And he loves you. And also, uh, for those of you that are teenagers or young adults, we're so glad that you're also watching today, because you know what? It's affecting all of us in different ways, but God understands, because we're all his children, and he created us, so he knows each one of your hearts right now. All right, and we're, uh, we we want to make this feel as much like a, a regular church service as, as possible, and so we have asked Dallas to lead us in some worship to start off, so I'm going to turn it over to Dallas if you can uh, just lead us in a time of worship to begin with. Thank you. Well, good morning, everybody, or maybe afternoon or evening, whenever you're planning to watch. Uh, we're just going to open up in a time of worship, so I don't expect you to stand at home, but please sing along and, and let's give God some praise. Amen? Two, three, four.
Thank you, Dallas, for leading us in that time of worship. Um, worship is so valuable, uh, especially uh, at times like this. Even this week, I was listening to a number of worship songs, and there's just so much, so much encouragement that comes from from taking those times just to be in God's presence, just to focus on Him, focus on His goodness in our lives, and that's what is so beautiful about uh, time of worship. So. So thank you, Dallas. And, uh, we're going to go right into our confession for this week, but I'm going to explain how this is going to happen. We, um, in, we, I know we normally have confession in our bulletin, and uh, for those of you that are uh, new, this is your first time watching online or first time that you've been uh, around us at City View, we always like to declare God's Word over our lives. We like to make a confession. But for today and with all that's been going on, uh, it's just that I find so much comfort in uh, reading Psalms 91. But someone gave us a, a version of Psalm, Psalms 91 with uh, blanks put in where you can insert your name. And so I'm going to ask uh, Dallas and Pastor Gene, and we're going to do this together, the three of us here. And uh, if you'd like a copy of this, you uh, just email or let us know, contact us, and we'll send you a copy of this where you can insert your name, okay? And so this is going to be our confession for today. It's Psalms 91, but everywhere there's a blank in the sheet, we're going to insert our names. So here we go, Psalms 91. Keith South. dwells South. in the shelter of the Most High, and he abides under the shadow of the Almighty. Keith says of the Lord, My refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. For it is God who delivers Keith from the snare of the trapper and from the deadly pestilence, fatal infectious disease. God will cover Keith with his pinions, and under his wings Keith may seek refuge. God's faithfulness is a shield and buckler. Keith will not be afraid of the terror by night or of the arrow that flies by day, of the pestilence that stalks in darkness, or of the destruction that lays waste at noon. A thousand shall fall at Keith's side, and ten thousand at his right hand, but it shall not approach Keith. Keith will only look on with his eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. For Keith has made the Lord his refuge, even the Most High, Keith's dwelling place, no evil will befall Keith, nor will any plague come near Keith's dwelling. For he will give his angels charge concerning Keith to guard Keith in all his ways. They will bear Keith up with their hands, lest Keith strike his foot against a stone. Keith will tread upon the lion and cobra, the young lion and the serpent he will trample down. Because Keith has loved me, God said, Therefore I will deliver him. I will set Keith securely on high, because Keith has known my name. Keith will call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with Keith in trouble. I will rescue Keith and honor Keith. And with long life I will satisfy Keith and show him, Behold, my salvation. Wow, it's so powerful to be able to, you know, take our strength from God's Word. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that as we go forward here. But if you would, uh, would you like these? If you'd like these, uh, I have <coughs> scriptures last Sunday that I gave out to everyone that was at church. And uh, just let us know, and we will email those uh, off to you. So, Okay, so here we go. We're going to get right into the Word and do some teaching. I... I just want today to be an encouragement for everybody, and uh, Dallas and Pastor Gene are here with me, and so thankful for them, and, and uh, just chime in wherever, if you guys want to add some things in. The, the title I, for today is uh, The Real Enemy, and we want to talk about what the real enemy is in this situation, and there's a lot of people who have thoughts about what's going on, and they're, they're pretty stressed about things, but we want to talk about what the real enemy is. Now, just to rewind for those of you that weren't there maybe last week, last week, and by the way, for those of you that are watching online, you can go back 
And in the YouTube videos, you can see uh, last week's message as well. You can go back and listen that, to that one. We did communion last week. If you're going to watch last week, get your communion stuff ready and take communion with us, okay? So anyhow, last week, one of the verses that we used was 2 Corinthians 5 and 7. And in the King James, it says this. It says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Mm -hmm. And uh, I found a translation, uh, it was the New Life Version. And I don't, I, I don't read that version very often, but I really like the way that they said it in the New Life Version. It says this, it says, Our life is lived by faith. We do not live by what we see in front of us. And all week long, we've been seeing things in front of us. We've been seeing news reports, and we've been hearing things, and we've been talking to people. And I, there's probably no one watching this video who, ha video who hasn't been in some way affected by everything that's happening in the world with this coronavirus. But you know what? We live by faith. Mm -hmm. And yes, we're aware of what's happening around us, but we don't live by those things. We don't make our decisions. We don't base our faith on the things that are happening around us. We base our faith on God's Word. And so we live by faith because we are putting our trust in God. And I was thinking, you know, it's not much different than if we were standing in faith for some other area of our lives. You know, we, I mean, if, if we were dealing with a healing situation or if we were dealing with a, a financial situation, you know, you can't look at the circumstances, right? Mm -hmm. We've got to look at what God's Word said and what His promises are. And that's where we base our faith. We base our, our faith and our trust and our hopes in, in our hope in what God's Word says about those situations. Amen? Amen. Now, when I think about this, this uh, the real enemy, <laughs> I, 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 of course, I love sports. Those of you that don't know me, uh, I'm a real sports fan. And, and one of the things I love is basketball. Uh, it was fun to watch das Dallas playing basketball up through the years. And and uh, when, you're, when you're coaching basketball or when you're playing basketball, one of the things that you have to do, if, you, if you're facing an opponent... You've got to identify a couple things. First of all, you've got to identi identify the greatest threat. So in other words, on the other team, what is the greatest threat? Who's the person that's going to do the most damage? Maybe it's Steph Curry shooting a, a three-point shot, or, or, or maybe it's uh, uh, you know, Norm Powell driving the lane and going for a hoop or the layup or whatever. But in order to be able to defend and be able to be victorious, you've got to first identify what the greatest threat is on the other team. Mm -hmm. And then you've got to take action to stop that. And that might mean double teaming somebody. It might mean you know getting in the way and blocking a shot or getting a hand up or whatever it is. We, we've got to do those two things. And you know what? In our current situation... The same two things apply. And first of all, we've got to identify what is the greatest threat. Mm -hmm. That's why I titled this The Real Enemy, okay? Mm -hmm. And I'm here to tell you today, and I'll make a bold statement, and you can, <laughs> you can think about what I'm about to say, but COVID-19 is not the greatest threat. Amen. Fear is. Yeah. Fear is the greatest threat yeah. in these times. Mm -hmm. Everything is uncertain. It's uncertain for all of us. But statistically, even if we look at the things that have happened already, you know, in China and some of the other countries that have got it under control, the, 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 the virus is not the greatest threat. But the fear of the virus and the fear of how it's going to impact our lives is actually the greatest threat to us. And I think we, you know, we understand that we feel so, so sad and so deeply for the people that have passed away with this mm -hmm. virus. But yeah. mm -hmm. as I was mentioning to Pastor Keith this week, if we all um, tuned into the news each day, and every day we heard, oh, there's three people that died of a heart attack today in Edmonton, and there was five in BC and six in Ontario. And if you heard that repeatedly day after day, mm -hmm. you would start to fear a heart attack in the same way and it doesn't mean that our hearts don't go out to those people and mm -hmm. people that have passed away in alberta and in other parts of the world we are we just all need to be praying uh, especially for italy and and some of the european countries because it has gone rampant and probably because it wasn't dealt with properly and when it first started but regardless of that 
yes, we're very aware that people have died and it is serious. But in the same respect, we have to try to put it into perspective as well and realize that fear is what we're all battling with. And it's not just the health aspect, it's financially as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, amen. The, the Bible tells us in 2 Timothy 1 and 7, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. If I read that same verse in the contemporary English version, it says this. It says, God's spirit doesn't make cowards out of us. Okay, when God's spirit is at work in me, it doesn't make cowards out of us. The Spirit gives us power and love and self-control. And you know what? Dealing with fear in our lives is, in a sense, it's a self-control issue, right? We have a choice. We have a choice to get in fear and allow it to overwhelm us, or we can choose to put our faith and our confidence in God. Mm -hmm. Dallas, you've been out in the workforce this week. Uh, uh, Pastor Jean and I, we've had the privilege of spending some awesome home time together. She's been making nice home-cooked meals for me. It's just been a wonderful week. We even went out for breakfast one day, and that was special, you know, but we just have had some quality time together this week. But Dallas, I know you're out in the workforce. And what do you see out there in terms of the people and how they're reacting to the situation? Would you agree that it's the fear that is the biggest threat? Uh, definitely. I mean, in the, in the, like I work for federal government and so we don't mm -hmm. have the luxury of taking a few weeks off. Uh, mm -hmm. the, you know, our entire country hinges on people who are in my role finding a way to get to work. And there's a lot of fear out there and, and I think some of it is just uh, maybe a, a not understanding of why the government is asking us to do different things or why are we taking precautions? What does it mean when the province says we're in a state of emergency? That doesn't mean we're in a situation where people can't go outside. That doesn't mean that we're in a situation where you can't call somebody and talk to them on the phone, but that's what's being perpetuated in social media, in the news, mm -hmm. and that's where the fear is creeping into our businesses and our economy as it is and people are buying you know seen amounts of supplies as if as if this is going to be solved in a week uh, that's not actually the case and so what we need to be trying to do as Christians and as believers is how can we live in an uncertain time with the certainty that God is out there to protect us how can I go to work and be an encouragement because I, I said to Portia and we were talking about this, I said, my workplace is pretty glum, like there's a lot of stuff going on, and there's a lot of people concerned, like am I at risk if I come to work? Um, and I, I asked, I was like, what do you think of some ways I could be an encouragement to my workplace? And I think it's just, just having some joy, just having, you know, not making light of the situation, but understanding that there's certain things in place to protect us, but as a Christian, I have the certainty of knowing that I'm protected even beyond just staying at home mm -hmm. and so as as we go out we've enjoyed a lot of family time but we've gone for walks mm -hmm. we've we've met up with Corey from church for a walk yesterday um you know you can't go sit in the, the coffee shop right now but they're not closed you can go get a coffee and you can go for a walk you can um you know take your bible and go sit somewhere and read a book the weather's changing things are getting nicer mm -hmm. and so yes i do agree uh that fear uh is the spirit that's mm -hmm kind of covering everyone and unfortunately if you look at statistics the the quoting of this particular virus in the media is on the daily uh, in the billions of quotes yes. when other diseases right. that we still deal with on a daily basis that actually right. take more lives mm -hmm. are right. not being talked about Absolutely. and so I agree with you Pastor Jean like if we talked about heart attacks all day or we talked about a different type of ailment all day long mm -hmm. That input mm -hmm. will breed fear, yeah. which is why our Bibles are important. Amen. Fellowship is Amen. important. Amen. Worship Amen. is important. Amen. That's our weapons. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Amen. 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 And, and not to say that fear isn't an actual, like it's an actual spirit, and that's yep. what we've been taught. And you can actually feel it coming onto your life, and that's why it's so important. The minute that you sense that, 
And that's what we've been doing a lot this week is I'm so thankful for technology and for, so, um, mm -hmm. you know, YouTube and things like that. But there's been conferences, uh, not conferences, but, you know, um, programs streamed where they'll have, you know, five or six leaders speaking. Mm -hmm. um, we've taken communion online with different leaders across Canada. Um, and if, if I sense that the fear is starting to want to come in on me, I just, again, I turn on something encouraging. I do not turn on the news. Um, it's okay to keep abreast of it maybe once a day to make sure that you're on top of any changes or anything that you do need to know. But, but most of the time we need to be filling our thoughts with other things because really this has come to steal all our joy. And remember, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And so we have to, we have to all take, you know, proactive measures in addition to the physical things that we're doing to guard our spirits and guard yes. our souls Amen. right now. Amen. Amen. That makes so much sense. You know, uh, the, I mean, the statistics prove, the medic, medical community has proven that, um, that you, for your mental health, you need some relief from this kind of stress, right? Yeah. And even, I said to Pastor Jean the other night, I said, we need to watch something funny. You yeah, know, we've been guilty, totally consumed. It was a good thing. Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, so we, we put on the, the voice and watched them fight over the contestants, and, and we just laughed, and it was, it was so healthy, and it was so good, right? And, and so we need to do those kinds of things in order to keep ourselves, you know, like mentally healthy throughout all this. But the key here is where are we putting our faith, right? Are we putting our faith in social distancing? And those are, that's, a, you know, that's fine that, you know, they're telling us to do that kind of stuff. But is that where your faith is? Or is your faith maybe in your hand sanitizer? You know, we've been carrying our sanitizers around and, and you know, diligently washing our hands and cleaning our hands and everything. And that's all good. That's it's wisdom. But is that where our faith is? Or is our faith in the government and in the, in the freebies that they've been, you know, suggesting? that they're going to do or in the you know the plans that they're taking no our faith and our confidence still needs to be in God let's go back to Psalms 91 again and we had read this last week but I just want to read it I'm going to pick it up at verse 14 Psalms 91 says this because he loves me Keith says the Lord I will rescue him and I will protect him for he acknowledges my name okay so Keith loves the Lord and that is that's that's the relationship that I have with an almighty God. He made a way for me through Jesus, what Jesus did on the cross for me to have that relationship with him. So because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him, I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me and I will answer him. You know, you can call out to God at these times. Talk to him. L let him let him answer back. Let him put those things in your heart and encourage you. God wants to do that for all of us. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. God's promise for all of us is for protection and for deliverance and for salvation. That's so clear in his word, right? And then 1 Corinthians 10, 13 comes to mind. It says this. It says, no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. God is promising a way out. And if you look in the Greek, the word that is translated temptation in these situations is actually could also be translated testing or tested. This is a test. We, we are all in this test together. Yeah. But you know what? God's promise to us is that he will provide a way out. That Amen. is what's exciting, Amen. right? Amen. God's promise is Amen. our way out, right? Amen. Now, it's the same old story, but on a global scale. It's the faith versus fear. Am I going to operate in faith, or am I going to let the enemy that comes into my life the enemy of fear come in and destroy things, right? Mm -hmm. And my trust is in a God who promises that kind of deliverance, right? Mm -hmm. there, we see all kinds of Old Testament examples. Daniel, he was thrown into the lion's den, but he didn't put his trust in the, in the lions or in the keepers. He put his trust in God. God delivered him from that. Mm -hmm. We see where Noah and his family, they were delivered from the flood. The, it, it completely, you know, wiped out the earth. But God had a plan. It was to deliver Noah and his family. We see Lot and his family. God literally said, 
sent angels into Sodom and Gomorrah to lead them out to safety, right? And, and then in Israel, when Israel was in Egypt, when they were in bondage in Egypt, there, they came, there came a time, and we all know that this is a, this is a time that's actually coming in a few weeks, where the Israeli people, the Jewish people, mm -hmm. remember the Passover mm -hmm. supper. Mm -hmm. And at that Passover, at Passover, oh, sorry, Passover supper, <laughs> they took the blood from the lamb and they put it on the doorposts of their house. And in a sense, what they did, they drew a bloodline. And they said, we are covered with the blood. And our, our safety, our protection today is that we are covered with the blood of Jesus. And so we draw a bloodline. And Gina and I have been doing that this week as we've been praying and praying for church people and praying for you that that, that bloodline would be around and that the enemy and this virus and all of the destruction that is around us would not come in at us because we have that protection and that blood. Well, the other part was we need to, remember I said we needed to identify who the real enemy was or what the greatest threat was, and then, the, and then we have to take some action steps, right? And uh, the action step that I, I thought of was it, the story of the, the wise men and the foolish men in, in uh, Matthew. Uh, it's in the Bible, and it's, it's a story, but it says this. It says, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who builds his house on the rock. Mm -hmm. The rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew, and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. Sorry, I should have given you the reference. It's Matthew chapter 7 and beginning at verse 24. So if you have your Bible, just look it up. And here's the, the first person is the guy who builds on the rock. It says, and, but here's the key. Everyone who hears these words of mine, it's God's word. And if we put our, our confidence in God's word, that's like building on the rock. That's a solid foundation. But here's the contrast. In verse 26, but everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice mm -hmm. is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain came down and the streams rose and the winds blew and beat against the house and it fell with a great crash. Guess what? If your hope and your confidence and your trust is in God and in his word, you are on a solid foundation. But if your hope and your trust is in anything else, guess what? It'll come down with a great crash crash and you know we're we're seeing that all around us you know and we just have to hold fast we have to hold fast to god's promises we have to put our trust and our hope and our confidence mm -hmm. in his word mm -hmm. amen. amen so who's the real enemy here it's fear amen? amen how do we defeat it well believers have been given authority we can stand on god's word we can declare the victory speak the victory in your life Claim protection. Claim the things that are in God's word. Claim that provision. In a time of when, when the economy is in upheaval, we are going to need to trust God for supernatural provision and creative ideas to be able to see that provision. And then close the doors to the enemy. You were talking about that earlier, about Amen. closing the door. Amen. We need, to, we need to make sure that the enemy doesn't come in with fear and doesn't Amen. give us those thoughts. Amen. And just we need to stand on all of those things. So as we conclude today, here's the thing. What are you, what are you feeling today? Are you feeling, uh, are you feeling in fear? Are you feeling peace? Or, or, you know, we want to pray for you. We want to pray for you that today will be just a turning point. And if you've been stressed this week, and if you've been thinking about um, uh, fear, and if you've been thinking about all the things to do with the virus, we want to pray peace. And so we're just going to pray right now together. Um, I just wanted Go to ahead. add one thing too. And remember that we all have angels. And, yeah, and it's amen. a very real protection that God has given us. And when we've been listening online this week to some of the, the leaders across the world, what they are seeing as they've been praying is that God has, is dispatching a host of angels that are going out across this whole world. And so just envision that, that we're not fighting this battle as on our own. God sees and he is, is dispatching thousands of angels to help. And that just gives me oh, such comfort and, and just such peace to know that that is our God. Amen, 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 amen. Mm -hmm. So we want to pray for you. And uh, we just, I mean, we just want to pray peace and protection over your lives. So let's just pray together. Father, we thank you and praise you today that you are a good God. And we, that's never in question, Lord. No. 
You love us so much. And in every situation, as we've seen from your word, you will provide a way of escape. And this situation is no different. People have been faced with unsurmountable things over the years and down through the ages. Horrible things have happened. But Father, you always come to deliver. And as your children, we put our trust in you. So we come against that spirit of fear. We take authority over it in the name of Jesus. We break the power of that fear that wants to come on people. And we declare peace. We declare safety. We, we declare that the love of God would just fill every single one of them. That they would be covered with that supernatural peace. And then we just claim protection for every person. People that are out there and everybody that's working. And even if, as we go in the stores and those places, Father, I just thank you that the blood of Jesus covers all of us. And that we are protected and that we will continue to be protected going forward. No matter what they're reporting in the news with this thing. Father, we thank you and praise you for that, Lord. Mm -hmm. and, and, and for those, Father God, that are not working, that they're at home. Father God, that you would just um, give them a peace as well. We know that this has impacted our country, our world, in an economic way that has probably never been seen before. And we could get in such fear about that. But God, you said that you've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. And so we're standing on those promises today. There's so many promises. And we just are turning off our, our minds and we're just going to grab a hold of it with our spirits that you will have a way, Father God, for each one of us financially. And Father, we also pray for those frontline workers, God. Father, our nurses, our doctors, Father, our firemen, our policemen. Father God, each person, our, our EMT people, Father, they are out there each day. Father, we pray for our government workers. Father, as they are been asked, to, they, they need to be there. They need to be in those positions. Father, we pray for our teachers who are trying to carry on with their classes, Father God, online. And we pray for the students that have been just uprooted from their friends. And, and all of a sudden, they find themselves at home and feeling at times alone. Father God, you see it all. And Father God, you have your arms of love and protection around each one of us. And we just, we just pray for our leaders now, God. We pray, Father God, for our Prime Minister and his cabinet and each health um, person across each province, all the people that are working tirelessly, Father God, to just um, do what they can to help the people in, in each country. And Father, we also just um, thank you so much that you are our God and that we don't have to face this on our own. We just pray that. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Father, we thank, thank you. Father. Jesus' name. Jesus. Lord, we just declare today that over every person that's watching this video and every person who is a believer who is walking in your protection, Father, we declare that no weapon formed against any of us will prosper. And we thank you for that and we praise you for it. In Jesus' name. Amen.
receipt for any donations to City View. And uh, we want to keep in touch. This is a, church, uh, my son Donovan always reminds me that church is not just that one or two hours that we spend on a Sunday. Church is uh, all throughout the week. We are a body of, of believers. We are Christians. Mm -hmm. And we need to be able to pull together at times like this. We want to pray with you. We want to stand with you, right? Mm -hmm. So continue to... Uh, <coughs> Keep in touch with us. And remember what we said last Sunday about taking communion at home with your family. Continue to remind yourself of the covenant that we have with Jesus, right? And put your faith in action. And in a practical way, maybe that means you pray uh, with somebody or just keep praying. But maybe you pray for somebody, phone up and encourage them. We had phone calls this week. And there were people, we, one person we talked to, he's trapped in a nursing home and he's not allowed to even leave his room. And he, but he has a phone. So he picked up the phone and called us and we were able to Amen. pray with him and encourage him, right? And uh, offer to help somebody. Maybe your neighbor is trapped at home. Maybe they're in isolation and they need something from the grocery store. Do something yes. practical to reach out and help them, right? And then go online. Listen to faith-building messages. There, you can look at the previous messages from our church and go and look for other things that are going to build you up. Yeah. This is not a time for condemnation. It is not a time for, for you know, getting people all down and like just overwhelmed with things. We need to be encouraging each other, and this is the opportunity that we have for that. Amen. 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 A couple of announcements just as we are, are wrapping it up here for this week. Uh, for Thursday night, normally would be our prayer and life group time this week. And what we'll do is we're going to make a decision. We know who normally comes to that. So we'll send out either an email or a text blast to everybody uh, regarding the uh, this week's uh, life group Thursday night and prayer time. And uh, we'll make a decision on that maybe Wednesday or, or Thursday morning for sure at the latest. And uh, unfortunately, our, our uh, men's and ladies' breakfast that was scheduled for this Saturday has been po postponed. The restaurant is closed and until it reopens. Uh, well, when there when there's a place to have breakfast, we are going to be celebrating together. Amen? Amen. All right. Amen. So, anything to add? Well, I don't know. We no? love you, and um, we'll be praying for you. And please um, make sure that if you just need someone to talk to, that yeah. you call us. Yes. It's kind of fun right now. 
because they said to Pastor Keith that did you ever think there would be a time where we could actually just pick up the phone and people would be home? You don't have to. <laughs> you don't yeah. even have to wonder. Yeah. Yeah. But that's not the best. But we're we're still like we just want you to know that you can call and and we're here for you. We are here for you. We love you. We are praying for you. And we don't know how long this is going to be our our format with the uh, the home studio thing. But you know what? Thank God for the technology yeah. that we have. And and I'm so thankful for for our team and for Dallas to be able to come and lead worship. And, and just for Donovan and all the media things and all the other people on our team that are helping pull this all together. We, we can keep in touch and we can encourage each other through these times. Times. And so God bless you. And if we're uh, back online next week, please tune us in. City View Christian Center uh, YouTube channel. And uh, we'll try and post things on our other social media so that everybody gets connected and you know where, where to find us. And God bless you. We are praying that you will have an awesome, amazing week. Just remember to walk in victory. Don't let that fear in. But take authority over it and say, I am victorious. And this is two shall pass and we are going to overcome in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen.